Let's get cranked back up. We've got a lot of information to get into for this last hour. I want you to see this other Jesus before we finish. All right. So there's uh, another event of Passover with what you call counting of the armor. So from the day of first fruits of the resurrection, you count it for 50 days. And this we know is when the Holy Spirit came in and engulfed uh, the, the people of God. And they began to speak in a different, in a, they could hear each other in their own language, basically. Because after they had been taken into captivity, each one of them went to a different country. And the children was raised in that country, so they began to speak a different language. And so when they got back together again, uh, and the Holy Spirit came, they were able to understand each other in their own language. I mean, they weren't speaking a foreign language that nobody knew. It was, they were speaking tongues that of the other person's language. And what is that a picture of? It goes all the way back to the Tower of Babel when the people came together and they were all speaking one tongue and they were doing evil stuff and he confused it because they were, they were in agreement but with the evil spirit. And so they were going to destroy everything. So God comes along and says, I'm not going to allow you to have any more agreement until the Holy Spirit comes and you can agree in the Holy Spirit. That's what there was a picture, and so it was. Uh, it, was all, it was the same day, fifty days after the Passover lamb, when Moses was bringing the children of Israel. He he came down, literally brought heaven down up on top of Mount Sinai and seated on top of Mount Sinai, and gave Moses the word, and he wrote it on stone, and he promised. He said, "Right now, I'm writing it on stone, but there's gonna come a day when I'm gonna write it on man's heart." Y'all get what I'm saying? And so this was exactly 50 days after Passover when he wrote it on stone. Jesus comes along. He's resurrected. He ascends into heaven 40 days later. And then on the 50th day, just like had been prophesied, instead of writing the word on the stone, he sends the Holy Spirit down to write the word in our hearts. Same event prophesied through Moses happens on the exact day the exact time that he said he was going to do because he's a God that keeps his appointments alright let me see the rise of another Jesus y'all got to see this it's yeah I showed you the real one yeah and, and we could spend months, eight-hour days. I'm just telling you how deep this thing. We could go almost every day, eight hours a day, and we would not exhaust the things that I just showed you. There's more. I try to write little books and stuff so people can get it. And see, Joseph is a picture. You're talking about a picture of Christ. Joseph. I mean, in detail. Moses. I mean, it's just all throughout the book. Okay. But then there's a the rise of another Jesus. You gotta go back to the beginning again. This is after the fall. Jesus looks at uh, God looks at uh, Satan. And he said, This is what I'm gonna do to you. He said, Upon thy belly shall thou go and dust shall thou eat all the days of thy life, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. Now he does something here that's quite amazing if you call it. He said between thy seed talking about Satan's seed and her seed. From that point on he never mentions her seed anymore. It's all about a man's seed. But in this particular case, he says her seed. Now Satan picks up on this her seed thing. Because he knows whatever's going to happen is going to come out of the woman. So he's prophesying right here a virgin birth. It's not going to be the man's seed. It's going to be her seed. 
And the only way it can be her seed would be if a man didn't have anything to do it. Y'all with me? Now, who was the covenant with? Adam, right? So because Adam messed up, if Eve just ate other fruit, Adam could have disciplined Eve because he covered her. He was her covering. All he had to do was go to Eve and say, don't eat of that tree anymore. And discipline her and told her not to do it anymore and whatever. She was covered because he was in covenant with God. And the only way that she could fall would be that if he failed. So when he ate, both their eyes were open. And when she ate, nothing happened. Why? Because the covenant wasn't with her. It was with Adam. And as long as he was good, God looked at her through him. Y'all see the picture? When he messed up, both of them were uncovered. And God saw both of them, and both of them were naked. Jesus comes along, the last Adam. And the only way that we fall is that he has to be uncovered. And he was. But not for his own sin. He was uncovered because of. And once he paid the price for mine. He got his back. And when he got his back. That means the only way now that I can fall. Would be that he fail. I hope this makes sense. And because he's not going to fall. Can't fall. And even though I mess up, I'm not in the kingdom because of what I did. I'm in the kingdom because of what he did. And so I can always go to the boldly, he said, come boldly to the throne of grace. Let's work this thing out. Let me get you back on track. It might be some consequences for what you did, but you still my child. Yo, yo, this is the goodness of the gospel. You can't work your way in there, and you certainly can't work your way back out. All right, that, that's awesome. Awesome. I'm telling you, going to be some people that are going to tell you something different, but they following this other Jesus we've been talking about. He said, I'm going to put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, and shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his seed. Well, he's already telling the serpent that there's going to be a woman involved in her seed, and so he begins to establish his plan. Because he's slick like that, y'all. This dude, this devil's so slick, he begins to establish his plan, and he goes along. And, and, and Daniel tells us one of the things that he does is that he thinks to change the times and the law. Everything that God set up to remind us of the spirit of prophecy, he changes it so it doesn't line up with prophecy. And then we forget, and we don't know that Jesus said he was going to do it on this day. And so he, they got us celebrating another day because we don't know what day God said. This is where it all started. This is the Tower of Babel. Nimrod was in charge. Nimrod and his father, Cush, established a political and religious system. Babylonian history records that Nimrod was cut into pieces and his body parts were sent to different provinces of Babylon to warn the people not to sacrifice babies to Moloch. Moloch was a god that had, had existed, more than likely a fallen angel that had existed, and they received sacrifice of children. Okay? Keep, keep that in your mind. This is one of the images of Moloch, and this is one where the children of Israel were, were giving their three-month-old baby to Moloch as a sacrifice. Okay. So remember Moloch. Now, now Nimrod's wife took over the kingdom after Nimrod was killed and collected Nimrod's body parts from all over the different provinces. The only body part that she could not find was his penis. Now, I'm going to use the word penis. My daughter said, Daddy, quit saying that. But that's all I can explain what's going on. All right, so Semiramis, his wife, then decided to memorialize his penis by erecting a giant image of Nimrod's penis, which today is called an obelisk. Y'all with me? All right. 
the washing of the mind is one of the, you, know, you can always tell who's worshiping this other Jesus by the symbols that they put up. You just, you just, they tell you it's one thing, but really it means something else. So we got something called the Washington Monument. It's in our nation's capital. We go visit it. <laughs> Paying homage to another Jesus. And really that's wrong. Oh, y'all. <laughs> now, watch what they do. I just want you to watch what they do. Look at the dimensions of this thing. When they made it, they made it 55.5 feet long, which is equal to 666 inches. And the mark of the beast, there's a number of a man, and his number is 666. Then they made it. 555.5 feet. Why would you, I mean, if you're making something, why would you just say, you know, 55, 555.5 is what most people round off. They knew what they were doing. That equals 6,666 inches. They know what this represents. I just, I, they know, we don't know. And we'll argue with people, oh, that ain't what they mean. Another Jesus. This is the Vatican. We're going to look at them a little bit more here later. Are they serving the right Jesus? Are they promoting the right Jesus? Or are they promoting another Jesus? All right. That's another image of the monument and the dome. Well, what's the dome? The dome is the pregnant belly of Nimrod's wife. So you got not only the penis, but the penis is so powerful that he impregnated his wife supernaturally, and they created a child called Hamuz. Oh Lord, I didn't know, y'all. I didn't know that the, the church steeples that they put that in on. They slid it in on us, y'all. We got one sitting right up there. <laughs> They tricked us. We got Nimrods. And then they put a little cross on the top. Ain't that some? Wow. Okay. That's where we are. I just want y'all to see. Y'all see. The symbols. The symbols of the symbols. See, it's not, it's not, it's not what I say. As much as it is what I do. Right? I can tell you all day I'm a great husband. Y'all get what I'm saying? But it's not what I say. It's what I do. If if I'm a great husband, I go and beat my wife every day. And I come back to church and tell y'all I'm a great husband. Because y'all looking at the evidence. When she limped in. Y'all get it? Says something ain't adding up. So it's not... What I say is what I do. I, I gotta follow up what I say with what I do, y'all. Yeah. 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 I can cry Lord, Lord, all day long, yeah. but if I got evidence of another Jesus, all right, let's move on. Now, Semiramis taught that Nimrod became a sun god and supernaturally impregnated her through the obelisk. Okay? She subsequently had named Tammuz, who had been conceived supernaturally and was considered to be Nimrod reincarnated. This made his mom also his wife. And he was born on December 25th. Okay. You got, you dating somebody. And every June 1st, they say, I want to celebrate. It's a big day for me. Let's celebrate. They don't never tell you why. It's just a big day to them. They just like to celebrate. And y'all date for about five, ten years, and then you realize y'all get married, and then you realize after being married about ten years that the date that y'all celebrating is our ex-boyfriends or ex girlfriends <laughs> How would you receive that? I mean, I'm just saying. 
Would you be all right? Oh, ain't nothing wrong with that. It just. Yeah, I'm, I'm be hot. I mean, you deceive me. Because what you're doing in your heart is celebrating another. So Nimrod's birthday is his Tammuz birthday. It's December 25th. How many of us celebrate Jesus' birthday on this week? <laughs> Children of Israel came out of Egypt, delivered by a mighty hand. And they got in the wilderness and they got confused. They built a calf and they called it Yahweh, God's name. And they began to worship it and dance around it and do it. But they had his name on it. And it should be okay, right? Because I got put his name on the calf. And I'm saying that that calf is Yahweh. So God should be good with that because we're still calling his name and we're worshiping him and we're putting his name on the calf. So God should be good. But I'm just saying, just because we put God's name on it does not mean it is of God. And that he's going to receive my worship just because I put his name on something that Satan meant to deceive me with. Y'all, y'all got to see that. I, I just want you to see, and we're going to go in there a little bit more. All right, watch this. Now, because Nimrod was now the sun god, Semiramis was able to ascend into the heavens and came back down in a gigantic egg and landed in the Euphrates. She demonstrated her ascension to goddess by turning a bird into an egg-laying rabbit. Her egg later become, became known as Ishtar's egg, later becoming an Easter egg. On this holiday known as Easter, priests would impregnate virgins on the altar. And on Easter of the next year, when the babies were three months old, would kill the babies and dye the I mean, I spelled that wrong. Dye the eggs with the baby's blood. I mean, D-Y-E. Dye the eggs. The eggs would hatch on Tammuz's birthday of December 25th. So we got an egg laying rabbit. <laughs> and nine months later, there's a celebration. Tammuz's birthday. Y'all getting ready for them Easter dresses? <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's Jesus. That's from Jesus. Jesus. No, 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 no. I just showed you. Jesus died on Passover. He was in the grave on unleavened bread, and he was resurrected on first fruits. The only place in the Bible where the word Easter shows up is in the book of Acts when one of the writers changed the word Passover to Easter. It, the word Easter never legitimately in the word of God. It has nothing to do with the Jesus that we're supposed to be serving. But I bet you we're going to celebrate Easter again this year. I ain't nothing wrong with it. You watch what I tell you. That's Semiramis' egg. Picture drawn centuries ago. Her coming down to Euphrates River. They would paint the eggs with the blood and they would put a cross on it. How many of y'all have an Easter egg hunt? See, this is tough stuff, right? It's tough. This it didn't mean now I got to let stuff go. I got to make a choice now. See, he's calling us. See, it's okay when we, when we plan and when we look like everybody else. But when we got to come out of that and be different, when you're going to be criticized because you ain't celebrating the same day I'm celebrating, can you handle that? Can you stand up and be with God when other church folks talking about you and putting you down? Can you stand up when your own family members say that dude and that Negro done lost his mind? Because you trying to serve the right Jesus. That's the choice that everybody going to have to make. I can't make yours and you can't make mine. Tammuz is considered a god because of his supernatural conception and his mother is considered a goddess because of her ascension. She is known 
as the queen of heaven. It's in the scripture. She's the queen of heaven. She's the one that, that God was so upset with them about. That, that they were celebrating Tammuz and the queen of heaven. One of them just showing you. So we were doing, I prove it to you who we are as a people. We were doing the same thing 3,000 years ago that we're doing today. The same eggs. Y'all, all right. The queen of heaven. Who is this? Ain't that Mary and Jesus? No, that's Tammuz. That image was around thousands of years before Christ came. The Catholic Church took that image and told you that that was Jesus and Mary. And they always show Jesus as a little baby. Why Jesus got to be a baby? Jesus is a grown man. Sitting at the right hand of God, Father Almighty. But they put the image of this woman and this child. I'm, I'm just showing you how Satan slides this thing in on you. It's, you got you. Donna, they call it. This was her child, Tammuz. All right. Well, who is this? This is the Holy Mother. This is Shikmu. She's got the child. I just, I'm trying to show you that every false religion in the world goes back to the same source. This is where we're headed as a society. This is what Satan is trying to do is to get everybody to serve the same religion. It's going right back to this. When you study the Hindus, it's the same thing. So if they can get everybody to agree, even if they use different names, they're going to get everybody to follow the same. And when you get the revelation, we'll, we'll, we'll cover that a little bit next week because we're going to try to talk about what does that mean for us then? What does the scripture say about what's going to happen to us? We're going to try to talk about that next week. But in the revelations and you see the woman riding the beast who is this woman who is this that's in Egypt same God Babylonian mother was known as Isis and her child Horus I, I don't want you to get confused about the name changes it's the same thing Nimrod and Semiramis and Tammuz it's the same thing Okay, all in the Bible now look at this Look at all these images. Same image. A mother and a child. A mother and a child. No matter where you go. Mexico. Hinduism. It's in Cyprus. They got a different name. India. All of them got the mother-child thing going on. Okay? Different names. In Lebanon, Baal, Tammuz, Ashtoreth, Phoenicians, El, Bacchus. Astarte is a different version of Ashtoreth. Babylon, Belus, Tammuz, Rhea, and Ishtar. So you got this trend going on. Y'all see this, this trend with the mother, the child. And it's the worship of this queen of heaven. Okay. This is what, this is what Yahweh was dealing with with his people. He said, thus says the Lord, the host of God of Israel, saying, Ye and your wives have spoken with your mouths and fulfill your hands, saying, We will surely perform our vows that we have vowed to burn incense to the queen of heaven and to pour our drink offerings. Ye will surely accomplish your vows and surely perform your, your vows. So they were doing this. And they would pour our drink offerings to the queen of heaven. And they would make little cakes and stuff. And some of the little cakes would be in the form of like a what we call today a gingerbread. It was like a little boy, a little girl or whatever. And they would eat the cakes. Because when they ate the cake, it was paying tribute to, to, uh, to the uh, Moloch. Because Moloch ate up their kids. Oh, y'all. And so when we eat the gingerbread, we're paying tribute to Moloch. Because we're saying we're eating up the kids like Moloch. So y'all didn't know that. I, I know you didn't know. Look, listen, don't worry about it. Look, look. Paul said this. He said, look, if you sit down and eat, and you eat some meat, and you don't know where that meat came from, you can eat it, and you can be, your conscience can be clear. 
He said, but the minute somebody come and tell you that they sacrifice that meat to a whole nother God, he said, leave that meat alone. So what I'm telling you is repent, but don't feel guilty if you didn't know. But from this point forward, it's on you. Because you know. Y'all get what I'm saying? All right. In Ezekiel, he said, he brought me to the door to gate of the Lord's house. Because he was trying to show Ezekiel. He said, what my people are doing, man. I gave them Passover. I gave them the sacrifices. I gave them you know, first fruits. I gave them unleavened bread. I gave them Pentecost. I gave them the Feast of Tabernacles, Feast of Trumpets. I gave everything that I told them I was going to do that represent me. And they over here, he said, behold, there set a woman weeping for taboos. Mm. You know what Tammuz, you know what they would do? They would, they would weep for 40 days. They would start 40 days before Easter. And they would weep for Tammuz. 40 days. Today we call it Lent. <laughs> Lent ain't in the book. It doesn't glorify our Jesus. It glorifies another Jesus. That's all I'm trying to say. So if I'm doing something that glorifies another Jesus, I'm going to tell you why that's important in a minute. All right. Catholic Church. Our Lady what? Queen of Heaven. You think they know who they worship? Well, some of them. I mean, the one higher up, don't you think they know? Can't you read the Old Testament and say God didn't want you to be worshiping the Queen of Heaven? And then you come along and name your churches the queen of heaven. Is there not something wrong with that? I mean, if we had Antioch T.P. Lucifer Church, <laughs> would that not be uh, uh, some kind of sign <laughs> to you that we got something going on up in here that's something wrong? Yeah. They call their church Lucifer. So Tammuz was killed in a hunting accident by a wild boy at 40 years old. An evergreen grew when his blood was spilled. The tree was subsequently cut down. The evergreen is a tree that is, that is green all year round and represents the eternal masculinity of Nimrod and his penis. A 40-day mourning period was required by his wife, mother, a day for each year of his life. At the end of those 40 days, an egg, another egg, supernaturally appeared, signifying the eventual resurrection of Talmud. So they're expecting a resurrection. On each anniversary of his birth, she claimed Nimrod slash Talmud would visit the evergreen tree and leave gifts. <laughs> okay, so evidence. Evidence. Which Jesus am I serving? Now, you come in my house, and I got my evergreen tree. And I got it decorated. And I got my gifts under the tree. And we ain't opening them until December 25th. If, I mean, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, if you were, if you were an alien, and you read up on both religions, and you said, you oh, I serve the true and the living God, and He come in your house. But every all the evidence—that's so that's all I'm saying. All, if I had to go to court, could I prove that I serve the true and the living God by what I'm what's represented in my house? So if I say I'm true, I, I, I worship the real Jesus, and I come in the house and I got my tree up, which is Nimrod penis, and I kneel down to that tree and put my gifts. And I find out it's, it's not his birthday, but it's actually Satan's son's birthday. Which one am I paying tribute to? I'm just asking. Y'all can say it out loud. We know. It's just, we're not paying tribute to our God. Because the symbols don't represent him. It represents another God. This is what... God was so upset with Israel for, he said, because they had all the symbols of the other gods. He said, go cast down all them other symbols. You saying you worshiping me, but you can't worship me with all the other symbols. It's impossible. Worship means to glorify, to give value to. That's what worship means. 
So can I really give value to him using Nimrod's penis? That's something you got to work that out. You got to work that out. This is what the Catholic Church said. They said uh, the, the, the source is the new question by his Catholic life for the 90s. He said, the reason for celebrating our major feasts we do are many and varied. In general, however, it is true that many of them have at least an indirect connection uh, with the pre-Christian pagan feasts celebrated about the same time of year. Feasts centering around the harvest the rebirth of the sun at the winter solstice, now December 21st, but December 25th in the old Julian calendar, the renewal of the nature in spring, and so on. So they know that they changed God's times and gave us something different. And he's telling us, I gave you the Lord's feast so that you would know what day I'm coming on, how I'm coming, what man I'm going to die in, what my purpose was, I'm giving you that so you'll know who I am. Instead, they gave us this. Nimrod, artifact from 2000 BC. Y'all see Nimrod over here on the left? He got a reindeer, a long beard, a tree. Santa. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> Merry Christmas. They got us, didn't they? They got us good. Santa, all you got to do is put, take the N out and put it on the N and it says Satan. They tricked us. They know what they're doing. They got us worshiping a whole nother Jesus. It's Jesus' day, right? We worship it on Tammuz Day. We put Tammuz tree down, worship his penis. We put gifts up under it, so we kneel down, put the gifts. We got the reindeer, because, you know, Santa needs his reindeer. Then we lie to our kids. Because it's okay to lie, according to Scripture. Y'all show, can somebody find that Scripture for me? He ain't going to judge us on that. He's going to let that one go. Because lying is good. Right? Oh, y'all don't agree? Oh, I'm sorry. I got folk got mad at me, y'all. I'm just saying. Folk mad at me because I wouldn't tell my daughter that Santa Claus w- w- was real. Gonna mess up that girl's Christmas. Don't worry about her Christmas. Don't worry about her eternity. Don't worry about no Christmas. Y'all get what I'm saying? Valentine. Now, this hurt, right? This hurt, right? <laughs> so the pagans in Rome celebrate the evening of February 14th, February 15th as an idolatrous festival in honor of Leprechaun, the hunter of wolves. Nimrod. It was not until the reign of Pope Galatius that the holiday became a Christian custom. Another pope put this in there. As far back as 496, Pope. Galatians changed uh, Lupercalia on February 15th to St. Valentine's Day on February 14th. The original St. Valentine was Nimrod. On this day in February, Semiramis, the mother of Tammuz, was said to have been purified and to have appeared for the first time in public with her son as the original mother and child. Happy Valentine's Day. Now, I did this. I gave my wife some stuff this time. <laughs> because sometimes it's hard to explain some things at home. But we ain't going to celebrate Valentine no more. 
You know, that's something, you know. But I needed to explain this to my whole family. My mom, my daughter, my wife. Y'all ain't getting no more Valentine's. And we'll pick another day we go out and do some stuff. I still love y'all. But it ain't happening with me no more. Sorry. Christmas. We can celebrate the Feast of Dedication as Christ celebrated in the Scripture. Around that time, no more Christmas. That's me. And I'm announcing it so there won't be no surprise on Christmas Day when I'm still in the bed, sleep. All right. Sunday worship. Early believers kept Saturday as the Sabbath. Now, I'm going to tell you, this is important. It was a law signed in by Pope Constantine forbid believers to worship on the Sabbath, Saturday, and it was punishable by death by the Catholic Church. Many believers were burned to death by the Catholic Church for keeping the Sabbath. Now, I'm not turning seven day advance on you because I don't believe it the way they believe it. But there is significance to the Sabbath. What they did. Sabbath to another day. Okay, why is that important? I'll show you here. In Colossians 2, 16-17, it says, Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or respect of any holiday or of the new moon or of the Sabbath day. What does it say? Which are a shadow. It's another proxy. The Sabbath day is another proxy. It says it's a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. So the reason it's important for us to know that today is the Sabbath is because it's, it, it gives us the picture of how God is going to perform his work. If I tell you that the new Sabbath is Sunday, it throws the picture off. Okay? So the picture is that, uh, that God created everything in six days. On the seventh day, he rested. It's been six days almost. Six days is almost up. It's been six days from Adam. If I tell you that the Sabbath is on the, on the uh, Sunday, you might think we got a whole another thousand years. But we don't. We're at the end of the sixth day. God set aside a day, which is a thousand years, for the, for the restoration of Israel, his people, us. So that means time is running short. If 6,000 has almost passed and he needs a thousand years to rule and reign with his people, we ain't got a whole lot of time in there. So you can do the math. It's, it's, it's about it's 6,000 years. So we're at the end of the sixth day. We're about to enter into the Sabbath. And he said, you need to work right now while you can. Because when a nighttime comes, talking about the introduction of the Sabbath day, which is the tribulation period, no man going to be able to work. I hope that makes sense. All right. Now, what did Jesus say about the Sabbath? He wasn't worried about that particular 24 hours Sabbath day today. He was concerned about the picture and the, and the foreshadowing of what he was going to do later on. And the reason I know this is because he said it himself. And he said, therefore did the Jews persecute Jesus and sought to slay him because he had done these things on the Sabbath. I say it. He said, but Jesus answered them, my father worketh. Y'all are misinterpreting what this day means. This day is a foreshadowing of a future day of rest. And that day is coming soon. He said, but right now, if I see my father working, it's not the Sabbath. Not the true Sabbath. Because if it was the true Sabbath, even my father would be chilling. And since I see him moving, I'm going to keep moving. I hope that's it. All right. So we can worship. We should worship every day. Every day is a day of worship. But we should teach that the biblical Sabbath is on the seventh day. We can teach the prophecy because the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And now that you know we're at the end of the sixth day, we can start getting our hearts and minds ready for the coming of the Messiah. Y'all with me? All right. 
In Hebrews, he said, the mention of a rest was not a reference to that entering into Canaan, Canaan, for if Joshua had given them rest, God would not speak of another day of opportunity after that. So he was saying when they entered into Israel the first time, that wasn't the true rest that he, he, he was talking about. He says, so there remains a full and complete Sabbath day rest for the people of God. That's that thousand years he's talking about. He says, but beloved, be not ignorant of this thing, that one day is with the Lord is a thousand years, a thousand years is a day. In Revelation, it says, he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. And the region bound him for a thousand years. It says that we can have peace on earth and rest for 1,000 years. And he's going to rule and reign with uh, his, his Hebrew people for a thousand years on earth. All right. And Revelation 20 and 4, he said, I saw thrones, and they set up on him, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, Nimrod, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their forehead or their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. King Solomon. I just want to show you these names. It's almost time to get out of here. So fifth boy came to pass when Solomon was old and his wives turned away his heart after other gods and his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God that was with the heart of David his father. For Solomon went after Ashtoreth, the gods of the Zidonians, and after Milton, the abomination of Ammon. They're all the same God. And then verse 7, it said, Then Solomon built a high place for uh, Kamaj, the abomination of Moab, and the hill that is before Jerusalem and for Molech. Now he gives us different names for the different groups, but they're all serving basically the same gods. They all go back to Nimrod, Semiramis, and Tammuz. When you get to Egypt, they change the name. Okay? Uh, the splitting of the kingdom. After Solomon died, his sons Jeroboam and Jeroboam took over. The kingdom was split into the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. What the king in the north did, he said, I'm going to change the days that the Lord set so that we, you know, because if they go back to Jerusalem and start celebrating the Lord's stuff, the people are going to come back together again. Because they're going to realize the real truth, and then they're going to all want to be together in truth. Y'all with me? And so what he did, he, went, he established another day. He changed the feast days not to line up with the ones in, in, the, in the southern kingdom so that the people would never come together. Ain't that what he did to us? Yes. Change up the days so we'll be so confused we won't come together in one accord. But when you see the, the prophecy is in Passover, Unleavened Bread, First Fruits, Pentecost, you know, Feast of Trumpets, Feast of Tabernacles, Yom Kippur, and you see that he's fulfilling prophecy on those days, he'll make you come together. Why? In one accord. Because you see the real Jesus in what he's doing versus the fake Jesus. All right? It said he even ordained some priests, which were not even the sons of Levi. And he ordained a feast in the eighth month. The feast was supposed to be in the seventh month, but if it had been in the seventh month, they would have went to Jerusalem. He changed it to the eighth month. Yeah, yeah that's, that's awful, ain't it? Because he didn't want them to get together. He wanted to remain king. Don't y'all think that Satan wanted to remain king? Yeah. Whose spirit was in this man? Well. Satan. So that's the spirit of Satan. I'm going to change the holiday so that you won't know. And if you don't know, you won't get together on one accord. You'll keep celebrating your little Easter. And you'll keep celebrating your Christmas. And you will understand the blowout days. And y'all stay separated. That's his whole plan. All right? I'm going to close on this one, and then we'll get started next week. It said, but this, this woman, Jesus went to this woman. She was a Samaritan woman. Y'all remember the woman at the well? Okay. And you got to understand that once he separated out the kingdom, and they began to worship on different feast days, then later on, you know, other priests came in, they started teaching all these other gods, that the northern kingdom was basically the Samarians. They were half Jewish and have something else. So they had Jewish tradition. So this Samaritan woman, she called Jacob her father because she descended from Jacob, but she was a Samaritan and she wasn't accepted as Jews because she was also, you know, when the kingdom split, they intermarried with a lot of the 
northern uh, people. So she was still trying to follow God, but she had her maids messed up. Yeah, yeah. She had she had her ceremony messed up. So Jesus knew that she wanted him, but she had the wrong information. She wanted him. He knew she wanted him. And the father knew she wanted him. But she had the wrong information. So he went to her. She said, Her woman, believe me, that I will come to you. You shall not be in this mountain nor at Jerusalem nor at the He said that because she was bragging about her forefather. And she said, And this way we worship, we worship in the mountain. And he said, I understand what you're doing. Because you know, they, put the, they put the monuments and the penises in high in the mountain. But he looked at them and said, you worship, you know not. You think you worship in me. And you calling it by my name. But you don't know what you worship. Salvation is you. The stuff that I gave them is the way to salvation. The word I gave them is the way to salvation. The laws that I gave them, the pictures, the shadows, the types, the pops that I gave them. That's he said, but the hour coming, and now is because I'm gonna feel all that in my body. When the true worship shall worship the Father in spirit and what? In truth. You gotta have two to worship. You got to have both elements to worship. You can't worship God just in spirit. You got to worship him in spirit and in truth. If you leave one of them elements out, it's no longer worship. Now, I just want you to understand. You can't say, I'm worshiping him, except I'm doing it on Tammuz's birthday, because that's not true. Right? You can't say, I'm celebrating my Jesus, but I'm going to put it on Easter. He don't mind. Well, that's not truthful. So you can't worship him. It does, you can say you're worshiping him. He defines worship on his own, whether you agree with him or not. He said, let every man be a liar, but God be true. If you're going to worship me, worship me not only in spirit, which I got to give you, and in truth. Got to have two. If you're just doing one, it's not worship. We're just showing up. It's not worship. We sang a few songs, but it's not worship. Because it's untruthful. Lord would not accept untruthful worship. Everybody upset because Hillary didn't win. She said laws have to be backed up with resources and political will and deep seated cultural codes, religious beliefs, and structural biases have to be changed. And she was talking about abortion. We got to change the religious beliefs so we can kill more babies. That's the spirit of God? Oh, okay. In a letter that they found in WikiLeaks, you know, all that stuff leaked out. Look at what it said. Some one of her people said, we said, with fingers crossed, the old rabbit's foot out of the box in the attic, and I will be sacrificing a chicken in the backyard to Moloch. The other Jesus. I'm just showing y'all these people, they're not who you think they are. See, that's why they changed the scriptures to say God and Lord and didn't use God's actual name. The original scripture translation has God's actual name in the scripture. They changed the Lord and God so you, you could say Lord and God to anybody. They just titled. Who well, we serve as a people, the leading cause Death among African Americans since 1973. AIDS, 200,000. Violent crime, 300,000. Accidents, 400,000. Cancer, 1.3 million. Heart disease, 2.5. Abortion, 14.5. So we are sacrificing our children to their God, Moloch. And some people think this is real. And it's got secretly recorded. This is where the bushes go. 
This is where Colin Powell go. I know y'all like Colin. This is what they do. A whole nother Jesus. They come out talking about Jesus, but they talking about a whole nother Jesus. This is a uh, Colin Powell got hacked. He died back from the Bohemian Grove. Surprise, surprise. I said that Stephen Harper and had a nice talk about all this stuff. Both vote against, but quite a few would not vote for Hillary. Third party. They decide the leadership of this country at the. Right. Our money. In God we trust. What God? You ever ask that question? What God? Look at it. That's the all seeing eye of Horus or Tammuz. They're the same person, they're just a different name. One of them Egyptian, one of them was. So they got his eye, and they're talking about the coming of a new age with the resurrection of their God, Tammuz, the resurrection. They're looking for him to be resurrected again. That's what I'm trying to tell you. And this is the symbols of the stars that we follow, giving homage to Tammuz, the nut of Jesus. I'm just saying, this is what they, they can't stay famous unless they pay homage to the other God. And so they give the symbol of the all-seeing eye. They, have, they even got Mickey Mouse doing it. <laughs> Jay-Z, Beyonce, the Beatles, Pharaoh, Will Smith. They won't let you have that type of fame. <clears throat> Did y'all know that the word fame and fortune come from two gods that go right back to Semiramis? <laughs> Lord, you got worship. You got to. I am worship. Pay glory to me. Give me all the glory. Give me all the honor. Give me all the praise. But I read in the book that thou God deserves all the honor and deserves all the glory and deserves all the praise. Forget about me. He's done his thing. He said he already got me sitting in heavenly places with him. He said he got a crown for those who follow him. He said, I'm coming back quickly. He said, oh, my reward. He didn't say mine. He said, my reward is with me. It's mine. I earned it. But I'm going to give you a little bit. Look at all these stars coming up to one eye. Tom Brady. Y'all see Tom Brady? Did he really come back from, from that far down? Think about it. Really? Yeah, come on, y'all. We got three sports teams. All of them came down back from like deficits that are almost impossible. LeBron James came back from 3 1 deficit against a team that nobody could beat all year. They only lost eight or nine times, and they came back and beat them three times in a row. Then the baseball team did the same thing. What are, and then the football team did the same thing. And the people who worship this God are in charge of it, but you're expecting them to be honest. <laughs> oh, no, they for real. Kim Kardashian. We love them, don't we? I'm going to go kind of, oh, no, LeBron. No. <laughs> Then you give him the 666 sign. Oh, no, y'all. <laughs> he fight for our civil rights and everything. And then, you know, that's an old picture. You know, they gave him a TV show. Reverend Al Shop. They said nothing about Jesus. They, and Jesus ain't no way. Y'all ever heard Al talk about Jesus? They ain't never heard Al talk about If you got a national platform and you a man of God, you a prophet, by the Lord, and you don't never nothing about God. You that's like the whole nation with your platform. Are you serving the right one? Yeah. He's calling us out. He's saying, if you're the real people, I need you to worship like I said worship. He said, you are peculiar people. It's going to be peculiar that you don't celebrate Christmas no more. 
It's going to be peculiar that you give up the Easter bunny and the egg. It's going to be peculiar that you decide Santa is not in my home anymore. It's going to be peculiar. But can you be peculiar for me? I was peculiar for you. I was so peculiar that when I was on the cross, the soldier walked up to me and said, Surely. And I read that, Surely. That's peculiar. Surely. Because most people fight for their life. You said, But surely. This man is the son of God. And so he's asking us. He's calling us out. Now next week, we're going to talk about what the consequences are of not pulling ourselves out of that situation. How is that going to affect us as, as God's people, the Hebrew people? Y'all get what I'm saying? Because what's going to happen is, I'm going to show you, what's going to happen is that there's a false messiah that's going to rise up. You've heard he's called the Antichrist, right? This false messiah is going to rise up under a false Jesus. Even the Muslims call him Jesus. He's going to be born on December 25th. And he's going to get killed according to scripture. And he's going to be resurrected. And guess what day he's probably going to be resurrected on? Easter. According to Egyptian beliefs, he's going to be resurrected on Easter. And it's said that when he's resurrected, it's going to be so dramatic. Because when he gets back up, he's going to have all these lying signs and wonders and powers. And he's going to have a third of the angels who fell with him floating around. And the seven is going to be so great that he said, because we don't know what we need to know, even we, the elect, would be fooled. Because there's going to be a false messiah, a false resurrection, false angels. He's going to have the false prophet telling him, this is him. And when, you, and when we propagate the lie, we're telling the world that our Jesus was born on December 25th. So when we see the, the, the fall, we're saying that's him. Because we're telling them it's How we live telling people in the world that the real Jesus is born on Christmas and that the real Jesus is going to die and be resurrected and, and, and on Easter, we're telling them that. And it's a lie. So why is, why is the world going to be fooled? Because we help them. That's some tough stuff right there. That's some tough stuff. So, but we got opportunity. Lord loves us so much. He's giving us the opportunity to get this thing right. We're going to get it right. He loves you so much. He brought you in here to reveal the truth. And I hope someone shook us. All right. Any questions, comments, we'll get out of here. All right. All right. Let's say a word of prayer and we'll get on out of here. Father, we just want to thank you for this day. We want to thank you for the opportunity. We want to thank you for, for, for loving us enough to give us truth even when it hurts. Lord, we just want to thank you for being God and being God about yourself. We thank you for telling us ahead of time everything that you're going to do. Lord, we ask you to give us the heart and the mind to follow according to your will, Lord. We just want